This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. We're now moving on to uh, mergers and acquisitions. A merger, two companies merge together, or one company buys another company, um, which is um, a popular topic in the exam. It's asked quite often. And we have two chapters here. The first chapter, which um, is this lecture, uh, is very short and it's just uh, discussion points. So there's no numbers here. So I will keep it brief, but read, read it in full yourself. Um, but in the following chapter, the following lectures, uh, then we'll actually look at um, the numbers, the different ways you can be asked to do calculations on this. Uh, but first of all, just the... Uh, what you might call the chat chapter. If I just run through, but again, I'm not going to read every uh, word to you. That would be ridiculous. You must read it yourself. But the first section says uh, talks about the objectives. And of course, the objectives of uh, taking over another company are to increase shareholders' wealth. And there are basically two ways. You increase shareholders' wealth either because you manage to purchase the other company um, at an undervalue, which would uh, be nice, but uh, you know, manage to pay less than it's actually worth. Uh, the other one, more importantly, is uh, that there stand to be synergistic benefits. In various ways, some obvious, some slightly less obvious. Uh, maybe the obvious one is... Um, economic uh, synergy, economic gains, um, the, the two companies together, you've got economies of scale, it um, means lower costs, you don't need as many staff perhaps, uh, you can buy the goods cheaper, bigger volumes. So the, 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 those synergistic gains, uh, but there's also financial synergy. Um, now, interestingly, as I've written, Sort of thinking about the risk. We said earlier when we looked at capital asset pricing model that uh, we assume shareholders are well diversified. And so they're not interested in the company reducing its risk. All they care about is that they get the um, return necessary for the level of risk. But what's quite common, or has been, is companies diversify to reduce their risk. That one company in one business deliberately buys uh, a company in a completely different business, part of the objective being to reduce the riskiness. Now, in theory, that doesn't help shareholders for the reasons I've said. But there can be benefits in that if the total risk is lower, then uh, it reduces the risk of insolvency. Um, it may reduce the cost of debt borrowing. So I'm making a big issue out of some, a tiny point, to be quite honest, but um, well, that's what that bit meant. Um, increased asset backing, as a result of enlarging the company, it may give us access to more borrowing. Exploiting tax losses, maybe there are tax advantages. Uh, and of course, the third item there, market power. Becoming closer to being a monopoly, uh, getting a scarce resort and so on, getting new management in. Uh, the bit about monopoly, of course, is uh, appreciate, I mentioned before, we have a monopolist commission, and therefore, uh, 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 mergers, acquisitions may be blocked on those grounds. Uh, over the page, I've put predator issues. Now, what I mean here, to make sense of it, predator issues, is the sort of thing the company doing the acquiring will be considering. The predator is the company who's the acquiring company, the company who's buying the other one. Um, and they'll be concerned, well, you've got the investment decision. How much is it worth to us? What's the most we should should uh, offer the most we could afford to pay. Obviously we need to consider 
uh, if the target, the one we're buying, if their shareholders are willing to sell, uh, and all the assumptions that you know go with uh, the figures we're looking at. Um, there's the financing decision. Where's the money going to come from to buy the other company? Uh, are we, is it going to be an outright cash purchase? In which case, have we got the cash? Can we borrow the cash? Or are we going to issue shares to get the cash? Uh, or are we going to use shares to finance the purchase, or part cash, part shares, that um, give shares in our company to the shareholders in the other company uh, as a means of payment? I think you've seen the sort of thing. Uh, our offer will be we'll give them two shares in our company for every five they currently hold in the other company. Maybe we'll give them cash as well. Uh, but obviously we have to make, it is a decision as to have we got the money, how are we going to finance this acquisition. Um, capital providers, we need to look at, you know, to, to what extent our shareholders are affected by what's going on. The whole point is to try and increase their wealth. Uh, and what about debt lenders? I mentioned their debt covenants. Uh, we may have raised money by an issue of debt, paying interest and so on, but covenants, there may be various rules that were attached to the issue. Uh, you know, we repay in such a date, uh, we repay at such a premium and so on. Um, well, we need to make sure that we're not breaking any of the rules. Uh, the final bit I've mentioned there, market issues. Uh, there is uh, this danger we may overvalue the target, end up paying too much. Um, over optimism with regard to economies of scale. Basically, do our forecast wrong. Um, the other problem is the victim share price. Once there's knowledge that we're somebody's offering to take them over, usually. The share price of the victim goes up. And the reason is that the victims, they're expecting um, to get rewarded, you know, they've got to, their shares are going to be bought. They know we must be worth money to the um, predator. And so that pushes the share price of the victim, which in a sense forces us to have to pay more. Uh, as far as the target's concerned, the victim. Um, a few uh, issues there. If your share was in the company being acquired, or you're the management of the company being acquired, we want to make sure we get paid as much as we possibly can. So, you know, we'll be doing exercises trying to determine what do we think the acquirers, the maximum they're prepared to pay. They'll offer less. Well, we want to push the price up, obviously, so we want to try and estimate what's the most, what are we worth to them. Uh, obviously, do we want to sell? Is it in our shareholders' interests? Uh, remember behavioural issues I mentioned way back in one of the lectures. Uh, that whatever, whether it's good or bad for the shareholders, if we accept the offer, uh, you sometimes get the case where management don't want the offer to be accepted because, if nothing else, they'd lose their jobs. Um, what's the value of the offer? Taking into account um, what any tax considerations. Not for numbers here, just for general chatting. Uh, and, of course, how is the offer being presented? Is it a straight cash offer? We'll offer five dollars per share, or uh, is it shares per share? Uh, market issues, fairly obviously, it's the shareholders of the target, the victim, who have to approve the offer. Uh, and as a result, we talked earlier about these synergistic benefits and so on. Um, well, the majority of those benefits tend to end up going to the shells of the target uh, to persuade them to accept the offer. 
the final bit, defensive tactics. Uh, be aware of this. Uh, two particular things where there's a bit of um, what you might call terminology. Uh, it's quite common for the victim company to try and fight off uh, the uh, a predator company, the acquirer. Uh, either because we just don't want to be taken over or to force them to offer more. And so that's what I mean by defensive tactics, how to sort of push them away and either give up trying to buy us or, again, to offer more. Uh, and it's the shareholders, obviously, we have to convince. And so one is provide more information, inform the shareholders uh, much more about what we expect will happen if we stay on our own. Uh, convince the shareholders that there is no real advantage to them, that they're going to be better off staying, not letting the company be taken over, and issue forecasts, revalue assets, and so on. Uh, second thing they might do, lobby to have the offer referred to com um, Competition the Monopolies Commission. Whenever there's a, a merger, there's a danger of the Monopolies Commission getting involved, you know, if it makes the, the large company too big, dominating the market. Uh, well, if we don't want to be taken over, it might be good to try and persuade the Monopolies Commission to look at us. Uh, but the, the last two, stop the shares falling predators' hands. Make sure you understand these. These are perhaps more important. And one is find a white knight. And that's a term we give. We call them a white knight. If we find, if we go out and find another company who will buy us instead. You know, we don't want this company to take us over for whatever reason. Well, one way of trying to stop it is find another company who we find more attractive, who will fit bet better with us and so on, and get them to make an offer instead. Or as well, sorry, but get them to come in and buy us. Uh, now that's called a white knight. Uh, a similar alternative, arrange a management buyout rather than have another company take us over, sometimes you get management. They themselves take over the company. Uh, they arrange finance and so on, and they take over the company uh, from the shareholders rather than be consumed into another company. Uh, the other, the final uh, thing to mention, a defensive tactic, a way of trying to um, stop being taken over, is to have what we call a poison pill. And it's have something built into the company which makes things difficult for an acquirer. And you got an example there. Have a new class of stock, of debt and bonds, which automatically becomes redeemable in the event of a takeover at a high price. So although everything may look fine to the predator, great company synergy and so on, they find out that if they do take over, they'll immediately, because of the rules attached to this debt, they immediately find that they're going to have to repay borrowing at an excessively high rate, and of course that's likely to put them off. It makes the whole exercise more expensive for them. So there we are. I've talked for a bit. There's not much there. Uh, have a read yourself. But in the next chapter, uh, we'll look at the various bits of calculation uh, that could be required in connection to this.